chasing the stars will stride into the dawn. Never back down till the battle is won. Face each foe with hearts brave and true, unafraid of the unknown, because I'll face it all with you. Hello, I'm the Review Reviewer. You review it, I review you. This is my partner, Mr. It. Today, we'll be looking at Episode 1 of Something Witty Entertainment's My Hero Academia Abridged. The first incident was in Ching Ching City. Oh god, Kirito's back! Is this what you're calling it now? Incidents? An extraordinary child was born that radiated light. This is what happens when you don't lock up your glow sticks. Death toll was unimaginable, and that was only the beginning. I've heard of baby boomers, but this is ridiculous. Uh, sorry, I, I don't mean to ramble. The point is, it all just kind of worked out, and now tons of us are superheroes. Oh, this series is going to turn Deku's social awkwardness up to 11, aren't they? You all want to be heroes! How unorthodox. Look, children, I feel it is my job as your teacher to give you realistic expectations. So if I could propose an alternative, and hear me out on this... Garnies! Eh? I bet somebody'd pay a nickel to see whatever's going on with that kid's face! I can't imagine carnival freaks would be that interesting in a world where there's at least a 50% chance of someone like that living next door. You ought to listen to him. None of you first trimester plop-outs have a real shot at being heroes. I don't know why, something about that line and the delivery makes me think of Minamimoto from The World Ends With You. Free room and board, all the peanuts you can eat, Clown adjacent? You're clown adjacent. All right, kids, I gotta level with you. I promised the carnival at least ten of you, or they're gonna take my thumbs. Good, you don't deserve them. Also, since when is the carnival run by the Russian mob? Wow, that's like the third villain attack today. Oh, you know who we should call? Motherfucking backdraft. Aw, oh, hell yeah! Did somebody call for <gasps> backdraft? All night! Oh. Could you, like, call Backdraft? Okay, while the stuff with Deku makes sense, this is just a weird development. Why the hell is All Might a has-been in this? It honestly makes a lot of the decisions from later in the series seem really contrived. Man, everyone's talking about that villain attack from this morning. This new hero, Mount Lakey, is getting a lot of coverage. Me, 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 me. All right, sweetie. You know the drill. Enjoy your little video. Mommy needs to go make a phone call. Hello? Yeah, you're goddamn right it's me! I don't care how well you think your band is doing, Hisashi! I need money to support our son! I mean, it's more explanation than the actual show gives. Well, your test came in and it turns out you've got the most special quirk of all. Nothing! <laughs> See these dark shadows right here? Recent studies have shown that these are nearly ubiquitous with the 20% of people that do not possess a quirk. Now, if this were a quirk user's brain... Wait, brain? Doctor, that's an x-ray of my son's foot. Are you sure? It's uncanny. You know, knowing where this story goes, it's weird to see this guy so normal. But hey, chit up, little guy. My brother was born without a quirk too, and he couldn't be happier. He is? What does he do? Oh, he makes a very comfortable living selling meth! How's that sound, sport? You wanna sell meth? Yummy, yummy meth? Nah, he's gonna grow up to buy meth. One drugs, please. My man. Do you think I could still be a hero, too? <laughs> Damn, I am legitimately shocked that they played that completely straight. A villain? Hey, you think I'm a villain just cause I look like this? That's some pretty big of shit, kid! You know, I can't help but feel that they put that in as a joke, not thinking that the actual show would tackle that. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Grab a brush and put a little makeup. You want to do? Best alarm ever. Wasn't I just being murdered? I feel like that's not the kind of thing I would misremember. 
Oh, that? Who's thirsty for a tall, frosty glass of diet evil? Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, while I'm not crazy about the whole has-been thing and the voice isn't quite there for me, the writing on All Might is on point. I can feel myself in two places at once! It hurts more than you can possibly imagine! Speaking of voices, his is reminding me of Bill Cipher. Well, as the kids would say... Got you on the flip side! Child! I need How Do You Do, Fellow Kids, drawn with All Might, like, yesterday. Feels a little bit heavier than usual. Mimi! Ah! Jesus fuck, All Might! What happened to you? What happened to me? Being a hero happened to me. And yet, I love the Small Might voice. Jeez, isn't there anyone going to help with that kid? Meanwhile, that one is, uh... A choice? <gasps> you... You came to save us! Yes, well, shame is one hell of a motivator, you know. I also said some harsh things earlier when I feel this clarification, and I seem to be spinning a plot again, so we'll talk about this later! I barely understood half of that, but damn it, it was awesome! Thank you! I don't know what you think happened back there, but I had that shit saying right where I wanted him! Six inches down your throat? Exactly! I mean, shut the fuck up! See you at school, Joe Smoker! Damn. Deku had a perfect comeback, and he was just being sincere. This episode was fun. Like many a bridge series, there are a few choices made for the sake of comedy that are just weird, but I think the main thing that was handled pretty well was All Might. While, again, having his popularity waver is something I think will cause more problems down the line, it does work for the show's themes of what being a true hero means. Also, there are just a lot of great single lines. I'm the review reviewer. You review it, I review you. Grand Councilman, the review reviewer and Mr. It wish to speak with you. I've tried telling them you're very busy, but... Nonsense. Please send them in. What can I do for you, gentlemen? We were hoping you could answer something for us. Well, can certainly try. You're a necromancer by trade, yes? That is correct. Well, we were wondering... Is it possible to travel to and from the afterlife? This is about Eunosis, I take it. Me, me, me! Sir Roland mentioned that you were looking into her, though he did not elaborate on why. I can only imagine you're interested in her work. Uh, yeah. Well, she asked me that same question many years ago. Me, 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 me! That, yes. There are many artifacts that allow for free travel between life and death. However, they are not to be used by mortal beings such as us. The Harbingers of Death do not appreciate mortals leaving their realm. After all, it's meant to be a one-way trip. Me, 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 A common misconception. Summoning the undead isn't actually bringing the dead back to life. Rather, reanimating the remaining husks. As for communication with the dead, we're more like uh, using a person's body as a telephone of sorts. But we hear stories about people being brought back to life all the time. True resurrection isn't unheard of, yes. However, it is usually only possible if the spirit has not yet moved on to the next life. Otherwise, it is a much bigger ordeal than the stories tend to make it out to be. Me. One more thing. We have reason to believe that Eunosis is in the afterlife, one way or another. Any way you can contact her? Sadly, no. To go back to the telephone analogy, the body serves as a phone number. And if she has passed away, no one has recovered her remains, my apologies. No, it's fine. At least we know we're on the right track. Thanks for the help.